through the frame. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to the post lunch sessions. Um, our speaker now is Jocelyn Mouet, and he will be presenting on packaging shared libraries. Thank you. So, I will try to tell a bit of what I know on packaging shared libraries, and this is quite a large topic, so it will be a bit shortened. So if you want to package a shared library for Debian, well, what you could think is you just run the configure, make, make install, and build for your libfoo library, a libfoo3 package containing a shared library at version 3, and the libfoo dev package containing what's needed for development, meaning the symbolic link for the shared version, the static library, the headers, and development tools like libtool or pkg config. And that's all. You've done, you've got a package. <laughs> what? But we are not Ubuntu, so we are going a bit further. So, for, for, for the beginning, we'll ask what is a shared library after all? ELF, the ELF format, which is a binary format for Linux, includes um, the definition of shared objects, which are code that can be loaded at runtime, anytime. You know, the DL open call, for example. And shared libraries are only specific cases of shared objects that are automatically loaded at startup time. A library is defined by its application programming interface, which is used by the programmer, which is what is in the source code, the definitions of functions, how to use them, what are the semantics. So when the API of a library breaks in a new version, it means sources need to be changed. The ABI, application binary interface, is a low level, lower level interface at the system of, which depends on the system operating system. And when it breaks, it means that only binaries need a rebuild because this is an interface between the binaries and the library. And the ABI is defined by the so name which is a canonical name that defines for a library a specific ABI. So when we have packaged our library that I described earlier, this is not enough. You have then to make it evolve when upstream provides new versions. So the general rule is that the packaging system, which is in Debian dpackage, has to know about what happens, especially about interfaces, because it provides interpackage dependencies that mean interfaces. So if you have a new version that is just a bug fix without BI changes, for example, there is no change in the packaging. You can go ahead. But if the new version includes, for example, new features, that means new symbols, New symbols meaning new functions added to the interface or new variables accessible. You have to inform the SH lab system of the package. So this is just a call. You add the dash v version, the dash e parameter to dh make SH libs. The third case is that symbols have been removed or the meaning is changed. This is what we call the ABI breakage. So in this case, the so name has to be changed. In turn, the library package, which is built upon, which is built on the so name, has to be changed as well. And the last case is when the API changes. This means you have to change the sources. So the best course of action is to change the development package name itself. So that package that used to build against libfoo 3 dev have to be changed and to reflect the change in the build dependency. 
So what is a library transition? When the ABI changes, you have a library transition, and it means all the package using the, the library has to be rebuilt. And the testing process, the release process, means they all have to go to testing together. So the first thing to do before uploading such a package is to ask the release team. Because if two libraries are entering together and they are entangled, then they have to go to testing together. And it complicates the transition. So there are several courses of action in Debian. If the change has sufficiently small consequences, you can just upload right to a unstable, and you have the release team to trigger binary non maintenance uploads for all the packages that are using the library. And if it's more complicated, a more sensible course of action is to upload to experimental and try to see what's happening in experimental. The worst case is when you have to keep several sources in unstable at once, and they can even go to stable. See, for example, GNU TLS or PNG for such examples. Um, I'll go on with a small case study of a more complicated library than the libfoo that I presented earlier. It's the case of gconf. gconf is more than a library because it includes, um, well, let's see how we have, we have packaged it. In, in libgconf24, we have the shared library, which is called libgconf24.so.com. Uh, two dot so dot and in the gconf2 dash common, we have put the configuration and data, for example, internationalization data, and we have a development library, documentation, and support binaries. But what should we do with the daemon? There is a daemon, it is spawned by programs using the library, it is also linking to the library. So if we put it in the gconf2 with the support binaries, we end up with a circular dependency because that would have to make the library package depend on the binary package. And if it, we put it in the library package, it goes against policy which requires library package to have only files that are versioned to be able to install several versions of the same library at once. So the solution is to modify the sources upstream to relocate the daemon in a place that is versioned. And then, when this is the case, you can include it in the library package. Which introduces a general rule about circular dependencies that have, I repeat, to be all fixed, because most of them are release critical bugs. And if it cannot be fixed, it generally means there is no need to have two packages. If those two packages have to depend on each other, then there is only need for one package. Then, upstream often likes to make the Debian developer's life more complicated, and here is how they are doing. The first mistake is the non-position independent code. Because when you are loading the code dynamically as a shared object, it is not loaded at a given address that you can know by advance. So the code itself must not depend on the position in the, in the memory where it is loaded. So there is a compiler flag to, to do that, dash FPIC. And well, some developers omit this flag. And for assembly code, this is still not enough because, uh, well, assembly code is not necessarily position independent. So you may have to ask for an assembly specialist if uh, your package does that. Linshan can detect non-position impedant code, run Linshan. Another very frequent mistake is changing the ABI without changing the so name. And this is generating a great mess. Because, well, once the library is released, upstream doesn't know what to do because there is already in the wild 
a release that is broken with the change ABI, so generally they say no, wow, well, we will say with this version. So what happens? In, if, the, if the change is small enough, you can, be, you can use package conflicts, you can conflict with a package that are broken by this ABI change, or you can, if it is of a larger scale, you have to rename the library package without changing the so name, which is, this is not, of course, a good course of action, but sometimes you have no choice. So you rename the package and a library transition starts. And some upstream developers are even worse because they do this for every single upstream release. So an example is HDF5, which is a scientific library. And there is a so name, which is always the same, whereas function definitions are always changing. Um, another example is the Mozilla Suite. At every new major version, they change everything and it's all entangled in a complicated framework that was not designed for Unix, but for Windows. So in these cases, you can handle the so name specifically in Debian instead of, as often recommended, use only the static library. For example, ah, yes, it, it has a drawback. It breaks binary compatibility with other distributions shipping the same library. That's what you will be said, with, that's what we will be told. But the answer is, what's compatibility? Compatibility between distributions for Mozilla, which is built in C++, and when different compilers have incompatible ABIs? No, this is just, there is no compatibility in this case. So you can break it happily, and you, it's better if you break it. Um, such examples, for example, libxpcom.so from Mozilla, was added a uh, so name with a D at the end, so that nobody ever thought of adding a D at the end of the so name. So it keeps Debian specific. For HDF5, um, I used the libtool dash release option, which which adds to the so to the so name the version that you you pass it. So you are sure to change the so name at every new upstream release. Another common mistake is to export all symbols that are defined in the C code, because every single function and variable that you write in, the f in your library, if it is not declared static, it is exported in the end. But you, not, you don't necessarily want this function to be part of the public application program interface. So the drawback is, well, you don't put it in the .h file. So you will say that's not a problem, nobody will use them. That's just, that's just wrong. People use them as long as there is a loophole. There will be application developers who will define the function themselves and then use it from the shared library. And of course, it is entirely broken and you have to detect such brokenness. So here, LibTool can help a lot, for example. It has, a nice, it has nice, uh, features like dash export dash symbols dash regex. You give it a regex of accepted symbols to export. So if you have a well-defined namespace, it's quite easy. Or if you have a list of symbols to export, you can use dash export dash symbols. You can also use directly the new LD version script feature that I will explain later. And finally, a um, small issue that arises with plugins is that, well, when you load a library or any kind of shared object, all symbols arrive in a global symbol table, and there is no way to distinguish wh where they come from. So if there are namespace conflicts, caused, they can be caused by private symbols, for example. Um, in this case, you end up severely broken because you will end up calling a function that has the same name, but it, which is in completely different software. And well, it just breaks. But for plugins, for plugins, this is critical because the 
plugins code can be added to any application with, which wasn't written with the plugin in mind. For example, if you use a GTK plus theme engine or an input module, it can be added to any GTK or GNOME application in the wild. And not all of them have been tested with all plugins. So there is a simple option provided by the GNU dynamic linker against it. It's dash L, the dash B symbolic. So you pass it with dash L when you're going it with a compiler. So this should be used for all plugins, all theme engines and things of the like. <clears throat> so we are now aborting a more complicated problem. Let's consider this package. This is a picture viewer written using GTK+. Well, you can imagine lots of such small applications. It used GTK for the user interface, and it used uh, libpng to read PNG files. And, however, GTK already depends on libpng to display its small, nice pix maps for the buttons, for example. Now, suppose the libpng developers change their RBI. So the so name of the libpng changes, and well, well, you say I rebuild the package against that new libpng3 library. But there is a time when, when libgtk is still linked against the former version. And what happens when the application starts? Both libpng versions are loaded at the same time and there is no way then to tell symbols from both of them, and you crash. So the solution is the symbol versioning. So you have to use a version script, which is, used, which is passed to LD with such an option, and it can look like sort of something as simple as that. This means you give version PNG 12, 0 to any symbol, hence the star, any symbol in that library. And you give a different version to the diff a different version name to the different version of the library. And as a result, in one library, you end up with a symbol, the same symbols have different names. When you're using a library, uh, when you are using this library in the binary, you see that the binary retains the version of the symbol additionally to its name. So if now in the global symbol table you have two symbols with the same name and different version, now you can distinguish between the two and you can link with the two versions of the library. Of course, as a long term, it's not a good solution, but it allows for smooth transitions. So, to benefit of all of version symbols, all packages have to be rebuilt. So what happened for libpng, which was one of the largest transition of the like, fixed packages with version symbols were uploaded right after the Woody release, and then all packages depending on libpng have been rebuilt before Sarge was released. So in the Sarge release, we still have the two library versions, but with all binaries having, using these version symbols. And after the Sarge release, we can remove the former version, the older version, and rebuild all applications that used to link with that version with a new version, and everything goes smoothly. Not a single bug happened. Another drawback is that changes cannot be easily reverted because once a package has been built to require a version for a symbol, you cannot tell to not require it anymore. So when, a, when you are going back, you will get a warning, but if you are changing the version name, this gets worse because it won't even work at all if the version that is named isn't found is in, the, in the library. So that happens if another distribution starts using a different symbol versioning scheme. And that will also happen if upstream starts using a different versioning scheme. 
That's what happened with MySQL. The Debian maintainer forwarded a patch with symbol versioning. It was accepted. And then the MySQL developers, they said, oh yeah, this version is nice, but uh, we can, we'll give another version which will, just look, which will look nicer. And they broke the Debian package. Not knowingly, of course, but it happened. To go even further, we can use the same version script to version the symbols and restrict the list of exported symbols with a global keyword. You tell about the symbols that have to be exported and with a local keyword, those that don't have to, and you end up with a clean library that upgrades smoothly. Finally, I will talk about the interlibrary dependency hell in Debian. Let's see what happens when you're using libtool to build library packages, which is the case for most library packages now. Of course, this is the case because it's a very nice tool. It's integrated with autoconf and automake, and it makes library building very simple. And together with your library, it adds a .la file that generally we add in development packages. And it contains dependency information between libraries about all libraries you depend upon. So, <coughs> sorry, at, uh, at link time, so that static linking works, that .la files are recursed entirely to, found, to find all dependencies that you have to link. But this is not necessary for shared libraries because we already have dependency system in the ELF model. And it is already recursed at loading time. So when you are in a static environment, this is harmless to have extra dependencies listed. But when we are in Debian, which is a fast moving distribution, this is really harmful. Because if you have libfoo, which depends in turn on libbar, which depends on libbaz, what happens when you link with libtool? You are adding a direct dependency from libfoo to libbaz, and it gets listed in the depends of your package. Now libbaz lib has a migration. You have now libbaz1. Guess what happens? You are now linking to two versions of the same library without any need for it. And you have to rebuild the new the libfoo package again, lib, against the new libbaz. And of course, it's added complexity. The Debian lib tool is fixed to not exhibit this behavior. The dependencies are used only for static linking. And when you are linking dynamically, they are not recursed. So we strongly recommend, many people strongly recommend, using the Debian lib tool. So you have to rerun the old the lib tool its process on your package. Of course, it is annoying because you have to do this at each new upstream release. And even worse, it is generally not sufficient to get rid of all and the indirect dependencies. An even better proposition is starting to be implemented recently. Is it is to entirely remove .la files. First of all, if you do this, start with leaf libraries. Don't do like the X people who remove the .la files from X render or X cursor with hundreds of libraries depending on them and failing to build because they couldn't find the .la files. And if you start with leaf libraries and then go down, you don't have any problems. And it's recommended to only do this when the library you speak easily config, which provides another means to do static linking with all necessary information. Speaking of PKG config, it is a, a tool that provides um, that provides metadata concerning libraries and which allows uh, to access them in a configure script. It provides a C flag, the LD flags, and dependencies which are recursed. And of course, recursing the dependencies is bad. 
But there, are, there have been recent changes and they are accepted upstream. So you can fix your .pc files by using the requires.private and libs.private fields for all dependencies that don't need to be linked in for shared building. Now, I had some nice music, but it doesn't start. What happens when everyone, everything else fails? When there is no more hope, when despite all of your efforts, you still have lots of indirect dependencies? Then the super GNU linker comes to the rescue because it has a magic option, which is named dash dash as dash needed, and when you pass it this option, all following libraries are only linked in if the binary uses actually symbols from them, which means it will detect, it will detect reliably whether you really need those dependencies and if they are added by something else, like libtool, like pkgconfig, like by a stupid upstream, it will just be skipped. So you just pass it like this. Unfortunately, it recently stopped working for libraries because of libtool, which reorders the arguments and um, turns this option into a dummy one. Happily, we have a patch that works, so uh, it's, it has been submitted for inclusion into the Debian libtool, so hopefully, Relip to leasing your package should also make this option work. Anyway, it still works for binary only packages, and I highly recommend using it also for binary packages because it will remove dependencies. If Relip to leasing the package is not enough, you can use it to remove unneeded dependencies and simplify the release team's work. As a conclusion, there are no magic recipes for packaging shared libraries, as you have seen. There are, there are lot of, lots of problems, and there are known solutions that work more or less when you are facing these problems. However, it shows also that release management is impossible if libraries are not packaged correctly. So you have to to deal with the release team, to ask them for help if there is something wrong, or to ask other people that also maintain shared, li shared libraries for advice if you need it. And even more importantly, you have to forward patches upstream, you have to help upstream understand your patches, apply them correctly, so that you, d you are not forced to use, up to, to maintain lots of patches against upstream, which is of course not a good course of action as well. And when upstream doesn't understand anything, well, you just kick them and go away and you stay with, with loads of patches, like for example Mozilla. Are there any questions? I've uh, read the advice before that the as-needed option for LD should only be used as a last resort. Are there disadvantages to using that option? Sorry? Are there disadvantages why you would not want to use the as-needed flag to LD? Um, there have been some cases on some architectures where it broke um, because it is not very widely supported by the binutils upstream. Um, also, some people consider it as a last resort measure um, because it's kind of a hack. But I tend to consider it as something you can also add on top of a working thing, just like we use DH fix perms to fix permissions. We can also use a hack like this to fix dependencies. And, th and there are also cases where you actually want to link in some unused dependencies, but they are quite rare cases.
well. Yes? Um, hello, I am Junichi Uekawa, and I maintain the library packaging guide. Um, hello. And uh, um, what kind of contents would you consider to be inappropriate in the current library packaging guide that I maintain? It's been a bit outdated, I guess, but is there any point would you consider to be wrong? Oh, well, there are many things that are good in the library packaging guide, but in fact, we could discuss it for a uh, for a long time, uh, for example, I, 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 well, and of course, it needs to be updated to talk about such uh, things, such improvements against library packages. But there are some things like always using by default the uh, libfoo 3 dev. Um, I don't think that's needed for all libraries. Um, we could. Uh, we could talk about such things for quite a long time, in fact. OK, I guess uh, we will talk privately. <laughs> That'll be a very long discussion. Um, you talked about what the symbol versioning does to the ELF header, um, but you didn't mention what the B symbolic flag does. Does that actually change the ELF header? or the um, I don't know what exactly it does to the ELF header, but when you use uh, this, the dash B symbolic option, um, the functions from the, from the plugin, in this case, cannot be overridden by existing functions in the global symbol table. As the as current LD works, the first function to be used is the function that is in the program rather than the one coming from the plugin or the team engine. But yes, if this changes, it won't be enough because it will go on the other side, the plugin function overriding the program's function. Well, if there are no more questions, I think I'll let the room for the next talk. And I will thank you for your attention.